how to paint this barbarian figure from Cool Mini or Not's game Massive Darkness today on Dungeon Craft. Hey, Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft here. Today we're going to paint this barbarian from Cool Mini or Not. I'm calling this video my first mini because it's a great video if you've never painted a mini before. But before we get to that, we have to reveal last month's contest winner. In December, we built the monster you see here. I'll put a link to the video above. We asked you to come up with stats, and the winner was selected by my buddy, Adhesive Tom, who glues together a lot of models you see on this channel. And that person, the winner, is Tommy Bennett for his creation, the Bog Boogie, or Bog Bogey. I'm not sure, but it's got armor class 14 to 17 and 40 to 50 hit points depending on your party, up to 8 attacks. It can be surrounded and attack 360, get 1 attack on every combatant, 1 to 4 damage or a grab and it drags you into the swamp and eats you. Its slime gives it plus 4 versus fire or lightning, its camouflage minus 4 to perception checks, it's impervious to mind attacks, and it lets out a mental scream which can disrupt a wizard's casting ability, giving them a minus 4 to their roll. So Tommy, your prize is this limited edition Kingdom Death Regeneration Suit Mini, just like the kind I painted on episode 39 of Dungeon Craft. Contact me at DungeonCraft at Yahoo.com and we'll ship it out. Congratulations again and be on the lookout for more contests, because that's the kind of awesome thing we do here. And now on to our Barbarian. I'm going to be going over the basics today, including how to paint flesh, priming, base coating, shading, highlighting, glazing. And I'm going to be doing it all with a really cheap brush that you can get from Hobby Lobby. I only want to use one brush for this entire video. You don't have to have this particular barbarian figure to paint along with us. You can get a barbarian from Reaper Bones and it's going to be mostly flesh and loincloth, so it's going to be the same color scheme. We're going to be painting this model entirely with this 50 cent brush from Hobby Lobby. You can get a package of these green handle brushes for just $6. We didn't want to use spray primer, we were afraid of obscuring the details, so we used Reaper Brush-On Primer. Our flesh palette included Glaze Medium, Reaper's Barbarian Flesh, and Citadel's Kislev Flesh. Our base coat is a thin coat of Barbarian Flesh. We always water down our paints. It is critical to thin your paints. I'm sorry if I sound redundant and I put this in every painting video, but it really is, it really is critical. Um, you, your paint should always be the consistency of skim milk. And here we're just covering all the flesh parts that are exposed on the model. When you paint with thin coats, they dry faster and you can actually paint the next coat on faster after about 15 minutes it'll be dry. The other base coat color is Reaper's Basic Dirt. It's a nice deep brown. Again, thin it down, do two coats. That's going to be our brown base coat. And you're going to notice that I'm going to cover everything on the model pretty much except for the flesh. He's got this kind of skirt, kilt, uh, boots, belts, the shaft of the axe, his hair, pretty much everything gets basic dirt. And hey, while we're applying this base coat, you should subscribe and click the bell icon so you get Dungeon Craft videos as soon as they're uploaded. On this channel, we paint models, build terrain, and I give dungeon mastering advice, so uh, yeah, click it. I'm using Citadel Storm Vermin fur for the fur on his, um, whatever they are, they're like gauntlets, as well as he's got some banding around his waist, so anything that's fur gets Storm Vermin fur. The Axe Blade gets painted Storm Vermin fur as well. Gray is dry, I wash it with Citadel's Nuln Oil, not the entire model, just the fur. Then I wash the rest of the model, the flesh and the brown parts, with Citadel's Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown wash. I just do it right out of the bottle. There's, You don't dilute a wash, you just apply it. People have asked me about making washes, and I will do that for terrain, but not for models. I really like the consistency of Citadel's washes. Even though they're very expensive, the bottle is large and they're of very high quality. Miniature painters refer to washes as liquid talent, and I think you can see why here. It really makes the all the muscles really stand out on the model. If you do apply too much wash, you just soak it up with your brush, wipe it off on a paper towel. I'm using Scale Colors Thrash Metal for the Axe Blade. They have a great line of metal paints. I think they're the best metal paints I've ever seen. There are three variations of, of uh, silver. 
and uh, thrash metal I think is the medium one just covering all the exposed parts with uh, thrash metal and then I'll after this I'll probably wash it again with nolan oil and highlight it yet again and that's the first two stages right the base coat and the washes and it already looks pretty good liquid talent indeed we're going to do the first of several more coats of flesh, highlighting the flesh. We're going to use glaze medium. Glaze medium is similar to flow improver. And you just take this little tiny drop of glaze medium and an even smaller drop of the base color, barbarian flesh. Look, I just dip the tip of my brush in the barbarian flesh, add it to the glaze medium, and watch what happens. It becomes a large pool of very thin paint. Watch the way I twist the tip of the brush pull it towards me so that I get a nice sharp tip and now I'm going to paint the raised areas of the model which are the muscles right so we'll go across the uh, the shoulders and the trapezius muscles all the back muscles you'll apply this light thin coat to every raised area of the model so that means the biceps the pectoral muscles knees elbows the brow chin nose etc Now I'm going to use that same cheap brush to do the eyes. This model has eyes that kind of, the pupils kind of stand out from the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a light gray color and just barely touch those pupils. Then I'm going to take Citadel's Nuln Oil on the same brush. I'm going to just drop the Nuln Oil into the sockets. Then I wipe the brush off on a paper towel and then use the dry brush to soak up that wash out of the socket. How cool does that look? And it's a matter of seconds. Now I'm not going to actually put a pupil pupil in it because I, I found these eyes were too small. But I don't think it even matters because that furrowed brow is so expressive in and of itself. This model has a really an anime style so I think it's perfectly fine the way it is. I call these cheating eyes by the way. When the paint is dry I add the next highlight. I take the barbarian flesh and a drop of Kislev Flesh, Citadel's Kislev Flesh, and some glaze medium. It's about a 50-50, maybe 60-40 mix, leaning toward Barbarian Flesh. So when I'm painting, I'm going a half a color step up, not a full color up. And I'm here I'm hit, hitting the raised parts again, like the bicep. I'm going to be painting the shoulders to show the shoulder separation. Same thing with the pectoral muscles, so we leave a little shadow, so it's got that, that separation of the pectoral muscles. Don't forget the forearms, the elbows, etc. When each layer is just about dry, I add another drop of the lighter flesh tone, add some glaze medium, and do another layer. This is what is known as painting up. And for this model, I think I did three coats, but you could do more. Pro painter James Wapple. I asked him once about the flesh on his models, and uh, he said he might have as many as nine coats. Here you see I'm going over the, the raised areas, the knuckles, the fingers. Again, with that same cheap brush, you know, you just make sure that the it's twisted into a point, the tip, and it's uh, first shot on those fingers. I'm also going to highlight the edges of the fur. I'm going to go in with... Um, or storm vermin fur. I'm not completely painting it. I'm not quite dry brushing it. I'm just kind of finding the raised areas and hitting those. For the hair highlights, I'm going to go one shade lighter. I have earth brown. You can see it's one shade lighter than basic dirt, and I'm going to hit the highlights of the hair with that. Before I forget, thanks for helping DungeonCraft pass 3,500 subscribers. Keep sharing these videos with your friends and I'll keep making new ones. Coming up we have a video on how to get into the painting hobby for cheap, so be on the lookout for it. I hit the armband with scale colors gold, barely touching it, and you can see it really pops. I wish I could show you the necklace, I had to do it off camera. Now I'm going to highlight the browns. I take Citadel's Baylor Brown and mix it 50-50 with almost 50-50, more like 60-40 with Citadel's Basic Dirt. Another great color to use if you're using Reaper. Fady Khaki is virtually the same color. 
I thin my paint and use it to highlight the raised edges everywhere on the kilt, skirt, whatever it is. Also the pouches on the side and the axe handle. Here's the, and then again, the thin coats. This is I think the second coat, right? You can always highlight more than once. And you can see the colors really begin to pop out. That's a lot of variation considering it's really just brown. But I want even more variation. So I'm gonna take Reaper Terrain Khaki, which is Citadel's Carrick Stones, virtually the same color. And I'm gonna add it to the mix and I'm gonna use it to highlight just the clothing. Right, so I'll, I'll leave the pouches, I'll leave the boots, but the clothing will, will get this highlight and that'll give it a, a different kind of brown. It's kind of like a gray, brown, kind of tan color. And you can see the contrast there with the boots and the skin. So for the vase, I'm gonna be using rainy gray and I wanna create a dungeon flagstone pattern. I really water down this paint a lot. You can always do multiple coats. And here I'm gonna paint individually the flagstones making sure to leave a mortar line, a little black showing as a mortar line. If you mess up, that's okay. You can just go over it in a very thin black paint and recreate that mortar line. And the paint is very thin, so there's gonna be a lot of splotchiness and variation, but that's okay, that's what I want. If you don't think it's dark enough, you can always do it again. For even more variation, I paint uh, two or three of the stones a lighter gray. I think that's Reaper's Misty Gray. And uh, I painted one or two of them terrain khaki so that to pick up some of the colors in the barbarian's clothing. And here's the completed barbarian from the front and the back. And here he is hanging out with the wizard and rogue, also from Massive Darkness. If you have any questions or I missed anything, put a comment below. And if you have a friend who's new to painting, be sure to share this video with them. And let me know what models you'd like to see me paint in future episodes. This has been Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table. And may all your rolls be 20s. If you enjoy the content of this video, subscribe to the channel by clicking the Dungeon Door logo and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. And follow us on Twitter at... Dungeon Craft. Thank you.